I'm Chef Frank, this is Proto Cooks, and today we're making empanadas. I wanna take a moment here before we start the video to remind you to like and subscribe. What are empanadas? Basically, empanadas are little savory pastries. And, you know, people can do them sweet, but in general, they tend to be savory. And they're from Spain and Latin America. The empanadas I'm making today are meat empanadas, and this is what I have for ingredients. Some uh, ground pork and ground beef. Chopped onions, some chopped garlic, some olives with a little pepper in the middle. The, I don't even know what they call that. <laughs> uh, some chopped parsley, smoked paprika, regular paprika, tomato paste, some dry oregano and a bay leaf, and some chipotles with, in, in adobo that I've chopped up. I like a little spice on these. For the empanada dough or pastry, this is what I have. All purpose flour, melted butter, no salt, unsalted butter, salt, baking powder, some sugar, eggs, red vinegar, red wine vinegar, and water. The first thing I wanna do when I make my empanadas is make the dough. The dough needs to rest. So we're gonna mix everything, we're gonna make our dough, and we're gonna let it rest for a little while so that we can relax the gluten. The gluten is the protein in the flour that makes our dough stretchy and a little tough. And if you don't let it relax, the dough kinda of just keeps springing back and you got a tough pastry crust. So we'll just make the dough first and let it rest. I'm gonna add my salt, and my baking powder, so all my dry ingredients are gonna to go together. I have a little bit of sugar. Sugar adds a little sweetness. And then I'm just gonna mix my flour and my sugar, salt, and baking powder. Make sure you get it everywhere. Put this aside for a sec. I'm gonna get my wet ingredients into my measuring cup. Water. I'm gonna add vinegar. So I have red wine vinegar here. And you get, might ask like, why do you put red wine vinegar in a dough like this? Couple of reasons. It stops our dough from oxidizing. So if we leave this in the fridge overnight, sometimes doughs tend to turn a little gray and this will stop that from oxidizing or turning gray. It also like helps keep it tender. It stops the gluten from forming or it slows down the gluten from forming so it gives us a more tender dough. I'm gonna add one whole egg and then I'm gonna add one egg yolk. So get rid of the white. You can save the white if you want. I don't need it, so I'm just gonna get rid of it. And then I'm gonna get all this and beat it all together. The butter we're gonna add a little later, but I just wanna add this together, get them all combined and beaten up. Cool. Let's put this aside and we're gonna add it to our flour mixture. Cool, I'm gonna to start to mix it up lightly. Just start to get it going. I'm gonna add my butter. And start to bring it together to form a dough. And I'm gonna do this in the bowl now, okay? Because I, uh, I don't wanna really make too much of a mess. And if I start this in the bowl, it's a good thing. And then I can get it onto the counter and roll it out. Uh, I have a little bit of bench flour here in case the dough is just a little bit wet but I'm, I think I'm looking pretty good here. I'm not gonna need this too much. I don't really want this to be too tough. So I'm gonna take this, put it onto my bench. I'm just gonna kind of fold it a couple of times. It's a nice soft dough. Need it just a little. I wanna develop a little bit of the gluten, but not too much. Nice, okay. Lightly kneaded it together. And that's our dough. I'm gonna flatten it out. Get a little of that flour up just to kind of keep it. I'm gonna flatten it out because if I flatten it out now, it's easier to roll later, right? I don't like things in balls. I like to flatten them out so that when I roll it later, it's gonna be start out flat. Let's wrap it up. I have a little bit of uh, commercial plastic wrap. I'm just gonna take my disc and just wrap it up so that it doesn't get any air into it. I just don't want it to dry out. You don't want the dough to dry out anywhere. So I'm gonna wrap it twice. Once one way, once the other. And I'm actually gonna let this rest in the fridge because I think that this dough is a little easier to work with when it's cold. So this goes in the fridge. We'll let it rest and we'll make our filling. First thing I do when I make the filling is to get the meat cooked. 
Uh, I not only cook the meat, but I'm also gonna drain it because I don't want any excess fat or liquid because when you fill the empanadas, the liquid kind of starts to seep into the dough and they get soft and mushy. Uh, it, there's gonna be a ton of flavor in them, but I wanna take out some of the liquid or the excess fat. So I'm gonna start with the pork. I'm gonna add a little olive oil. My pan is nice and hot and I'm gonna break it up. Break it up so I get some nice small pieces. I don't want big chunks. I'm gonna lay it out into a flat layer and see if I can get a little bit of caramelization. And I'll leave it alone for a minute. I'm gonna hit this with a little salt and a little bit of black pepper. Season as you go. I'm not really too worried if I got this brown. It's not that big of a deal. I want it to be cooked most of the way. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna drain it off into my colander. I'm gonna let the pot heat back up and then I'm gonna add my beef. I'm gonna add the rest of my oil, let the oil heat up and then I'm gonna add my beef. Let's add the beef. Hit this with a little salt and pepper. Okay, our beef is cooked. Uh, the beef has considerably more fat in it than the pork, uh, so that's what I'm gonna drain off. Uh, we just wanna get most of the excess fat off. Meat is cooked, it's draining. I'm gonna do my aromatics and spices, a little more olive oil, and then my onions. I'm gonna give these onions a few minutes to caramelize a little. I want them to cook down. Again, we season as we go, just a little bit of salt in this. I basically wanna try and get most of the moisture out of these. While the onions are cooking, let's talk about a few things. This is my empanada, okay? I would love to hear about how you guys do it. Leave it down in the comments. Tell me about empanadas that you do, or that you grew up with, or that you love. Even a place that I can get empanadas that are delicious. But again, this is mine, and this is my take on it. Uh, I put olives in, sometimes I put hard-boiled eggs in. Uh, if you don't like smoked paprika, you don't have to put it in. You can put whatever you want in these. Okay, now that they start to get a little color, I'm gonna add my garlic. Onions are getting there. I'm gonna add my bay leaf and my oregano. I'm going to add both of my paprikas. Paprika? not only gives flavor, but it actually helps thicken just a little. I'm gonna add my chipotle. I'm gonna give this a quick stir. Be careful not to burn our spices, but I do like to lightly toast them. Now I'm gonna add my tomato paste. Now I might need to add a little water to this, okay? Because I do want this to um, be kind of like a nice, juicy filling, but I want to add water so that it's kind of emulsified with the, uh, with the tomato paste. Okay, spices are cooking, tomato paste is in there. I'm gonna add my meat and try and get everything mixed in. Look at that. I'm gonna take uh, about a half a cup to a three quarters cup of water. That'll bring it together a little. My olives can go in any time. Gonna let this cook on low for about 10 minutes. I'm gonna hit it with a little seasoning right now. A little more salt and pepper. So I said 10 minutes, but it's really more like five. Everything came together fairly quick. Cook it until you can see that it's kind of come together. The tomato paste has kind of thickened everything. Uh, I'm gonna add my parsley now. Bunch of chopped parsley. When it comes to parsley, if I have a little bit of stem in there, I'm not too worried about it. Uh, I like to add this at the end because I want a bit of that parsley brightness. Mix it together. And what I'm looking for in the end product here is that once it cools, will it stick together? And I think that I have that here, okay? I don't want it to be too crumbly. I want it to have just a little bit of sauce holding it together. And I think I got a good look here. Let me give it a taste. With my R2-D2 Swarovski spoon. 
needs a little more salt. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to put it onto a sheet tray and let it cool because you don't want to fill your empanadas with hot filling. So let's put this on the sheet tray, let it cool. I'll either, uh, I'll probably put it in the fridge. I'm lucky enough to have a garage fridge. I'll probably put it in there and let it cool. Nice and flat, whenever I cool things like this, I tend to flatten it out, give it as much surface area as possible. Don't need to cover it, I'm just gonna leave it like this and let it cool until it's nice and cold. The dough is resting, the filling is chilling in the fridge, uh, and I wanna talk about some things that we need in order to roll these empanadas out. Now, you could use cutters like this, but I don't have a set here that's big enough. I need this to be a lot bigger than this. I plus, plus, I don't really want the, the crimped edges, so I'm not gonna use my cutters here, but what I do use is a deli container and a knife. So I'm just gonna use a deli container and a knife, and I'm gonna get the right size for my empanadas. I have a scoop. This is a, a number 30 ice cream scoop, or one ounce scoop, rolling pin, a fork to crimp things with, a one egg, I'm gonna put a little water in this and mix it up with my brush and make a, an egg wash. And then I have some flour just to dust the table so that my dough doesn't stick. I also have a sheet tray with a little bit of parchment paper. The parchment helps these from sticking. Sometimes if they get a little moist, uh, this will help them from sticking. I have my chilled dough and my chilled filling. I'm gonna put my scoop there with my filling. I have everything I need. I'm gonna unwrap the dough. And I'm only gonna work with half of it at a time. This is a fair amount of dough, and I wanna go fairly thin with this, so I'm gonna take half of my dough, just gonna cut it. And then I'm gonna take the other half, and I'm gonna wrap it up so it doesn't dry out. Just reuse that plastic, wrap it up so it doesn't dry out, put it aside. I'm gonna dust my board just a little so that my dough moves freely. I don't want my rolling pin to stick either. Right, so let's get that on there. And I'm gonna roll it out as thin as I can. It's still a little cold. I like my dough to just be a little cold when I do this. I try to turn it once in a while. The whole idea here is to just to get it thin enough without really working it too much. Just a little bit of flour on it. Okay, so. I have it about probably an eighth of an inch thick. It's not, you don't want too much dough when you roll it out. You want these to be fairly thin because you can have a top and a bottom layer on this, right? Just a little more flour, give it another nice push. Okay, good. Now what I'm gonna do is get my container and I'm gonna cut it out around my container. Now, if you have a cutter that's big enough to do this, definitely use your cutter. It's a lot easier, but I just don't happen to have one. And if you don't have one, this is the best way to do it. I try and get these as close as possible because I don't want to waste dough. You could re-roll the dough, but I find that it's a little tougher. It gets a little tough, so I tend not to re-roll. I just try and get it as, as much as possible out of it in the first roll, there we go. Okay, good, we can get rid of this. We can now take our circles, leave our circles on the board. So now I have my circles. I make sure they're not stuck to the table. If they are, just put a little flour lightly down on them so they don't stick and they come up nice and easy. Good, perfect. Now, next thing I'm gonna do brush them with a little egg wash. Don't go too crazy with the egg wash, right? We just want it to just moisten it and not get too crazy. We take our filling, I put it closer to where the egg wash is, pack it in. Try not to get it all over but you want them to have a fair amount of filling. If you overstuff, it's a, they're a little harder to fold. 
So try not to overstuff either. So that's why I go for this one ounce scoop. The scoop actually just gives me a nice portion. It's kind of the perfect amount. And I'll have to guess with a spoon. And this, I'm gonna link this into the description. It's pretty much, uh, I use this for portioning meatballs. I use it for portioning cookie dough. So it's kind of great. And actually you can use it for scooping ice cream too. So uh, get your filling in, okay? And now I'm gonna fold. I'm gonna hold on to my filling. I'm gonna stretch just a little and I'm gonna crimp down with the egg wash and the um, the dough meets each other, right? So hold the filling in, squeeze it, crimp it down really well. We're gonna come back. I'm gonna hit a little flour on my board so that these don't stick. Hold the filling in. We're gonna push that into the, into the dough just a little. If a little of the filling gets on where you're crimping, it's okay. Not a biggie. Hold on to your dough. Have a towel. We are gonna trim these up just a little, okay? I just wanna make sure that it's crimped really tight so that when I fry these off, they don't explode. Try and get most of the air out in between the filling and the pastry. Try and keep it as tight as possible. Last one. This filling freezes really well. So if you just happen to make too much filling for your dough, it's okay. You can put it in a Ziploc bag and freeze it. So let me clean up just a little and I'll show you how to crimp. The first batch is filled. Now I'm gonna crimp. I make sure that there's plenty of flour on my board underneath these. I'm gonna take a little flour and put it onto my parchment where I'm going to store them. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a fork Make sure it has flour on it and make some nice edges. I'm just basically making sure that it's crimped. I'm trying not to poke the fork where the filling is because I don't want the filling to leak out. So I take the fork, I crimp the edges, make sure that I'm not poking through the actual dough pocket. Crimp, crimp, crimp. So I'm just gonna crimp the edges so that they stay closed, that one's not. So if I see an edge that's not staying closed, I get a little flour, I get a little of my, get a little of my, what is that, egg wash? Yeah, egg wash. <laughs> and then I just kind of get it in there. I wanna make sure they're closed nice and tight because uh, we're gonna fry these. Now you can bake them as well, but I like them fried. So if you wanna bake them, you can bake them, but we're gonna fry them and I just don't want them exploding. Okay, so good, we've crimped all the edges. So if you wanna bake these, what I would probably do is uh, get another sheet tray with some parchment on it, lay them all out, shake off any excess flour, maybe put a little bit of oil down, preheat your oven to about 375, and then bake them until they're nice and golden brown. I'm waiting for my oil to get hot. I want it to be at about 375 degrees. Now, the end temperature that I really want these to cook at is about 350. But what's gonna happen is when I add these cold empanadas, it's gonna bring the temperature of the oil down. So I'm gonna do about four at a time. So I'm kind of playing with the numbers, right? Here's the thing about these is that if you uh, fry them too high, the outside gets brown and the middle is cold. If you fry them too low, they get a little greasy. So I'm looking for about 350 end temperature to, to fry them at. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, there's a little bit of recovery time in between batches. So you wanna make sure that after you take the first four out, you give the oil a little more time to get to that 375 again. Okay, so let's fry. I'm just gonna take about four. I drop them in away from me so that they don't splash. But you see what happens when I drop them in? They start to bubble right away. And that's what I wanna see. If it's not bubbling and you drop them in, what is it? The oil's gonna get in there and they're gonna get soggy. I want them to bubble and sizzle right away. I have a thermometer just to check and I have a spider to scoop these out. I also have a dish with a rack on it to drain them. You can use a plate with uh, paper towels if you want as well. But give them enough time so that that filling gets nice and hot. But we're basically looking for a golden brown. It should probably take about five to seven minutes. The R, look at those, nice and golden brown. Give them a flip, let them brown on the other side. Beautiful, so they're, they're, right about, they're right about where I want them. Look at how nice and golden brown that is. I'm gonna shake them, drain them. 
put them on my rack. Give the oil a little time. Oops, some of my filling's leaking out. Give the oil a little more time to recover and keep frying until I have them all done. Okay, here's the moment of truth. Let's give it a taste. They're really hot, so you wanna be careful. Crack it open, look at that. The filling is nice and meaty and not dry. Let's give it a taste. Mm. Very good. A little smoky, a little salty. The dough is super flaky and tender. I hope you enjoyed my empanadas. Tell me a little bit about how you make them or how grandma makes them. I want to hear about it. Put that down in the comments. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe, hit the little bell to get notified when we have a new video out. We try and do once a week. We have a PO box link down below. We have merch in the link down below. Need salt t-shirts. I control the salt t-shirts and totes and coffee mugs. Uh, I'd like to thank my patrons on Patreon for helping support us do, doing what we love to do. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Empanadas. I'm Chef Frank. This is Proto Cooks. Have a good one.